Hello and welcome to the session on English language curriculum. The process of acquisition of a foreign language is a complex task for second language learners. The learning environment and the availability of infrastructural facilities for instruction contribute significantly to the process. The teacher has to create a conducive environment for language acquisition, especially through multiple interactions. These interactions must be pre-planned and structured. Only in such real-life classroom context, learners can communicate meaningfully and effectively. The experiences they acquire in such contrived classroom environment will get transferred in real-life communication. Thus, the framework of learning experiences that the learners have to undergo could be pre-planned and context-based strategies could be developed by the individual teacher. Of course, there must be a linguistic platform or base for the framework. The content of the platform, the nature of the contents and the quality of the contents will determine the strength of the language blocks. This platform forms the substance for all teaching learning processes and is generally known as curriculum. The curriculum of a course reflects the philosophy of the course and gives direction for selection of strategies of teaching, learning and evaluation. What is curriculum? The etymological meaning of the word curriculum is race course. It includes a school's written course of study, content of subject taught to students, courses offered in a school and the totality of planned learning experiences offered to students. Curriculum is more than these and it presents a blueprint of planned experiences of students. Curriculum is a tool in the hands of the artist, teacher, to mould his material, people, according to his ideal, objective, in his studio, school. Arthur Cunningham This definition seems appropriate in the behaviourist point of view. In today's learner-centred approach to education, Curriculum is all the experiences that individual learners have in program of education whose purpose is to achieve broad goals and related specific objectives which is planned in terms of the framework of theory and research or past and present professional practice. Glenn has 1987. Developing the curriculum. Curriculum development is an ongoing process which begins with the basic questions. Who all form the target group? What is the background of those group of learners and what is required for them to meet the broad individual and social aims of education? In other words, the first step in developing curriculum is the need assessment based on the felt need of the learners and on the available reports and documents based on the field studies. Based on this, First stage of need assessment, the general goals and objectives of the course program are formulated. These objectives are expected to be realized during specific stages in the implementation of the curriculum. The selection of appropriate course content through which the objectives of the curriculum could be realized forms the next immediate step. The appropriateness or suitability of the content depends on its significance, utility, learnability, authenticity and feasibility. Feasibility of the content implies its effectiveness with respect to time and resources available, cost, socio-political and philosophical background. By learning the course content of a particular subject, the expected goals of learning the same must be fulfilled. Content is not selected at one thought. First, the conceptual areas are prepared. Then, specific themes or concepts and facts are identified at the knowledge level. Each specific content area must be relevant with respect to the already established goals. The learner's mastery over the content materials requires identification and selection of relevant, meaningful learning experiences. The feasibility of variety strategies is to be decided based on the nature 
of the learner groups and the experience and capabilities of the teacher. Thus, deciding the probable learning experiences that the learners have to undergo through the content areas based on the contextual variables is the fourth step in developing curriculum. Once the relevance of the content has been established, the learning experiences and content items have to be organized sequentially. This process depends on the availability of learning situations in schools, the availability of the learning resources or input for effective classroom interactions. The developmental level of learners and the principle of learning the particular subject are also to be considered. Any program is to be evaluated for its effectiveness and sustainability. The curriculum thus developed is to be evaluated based on the already set goals and objectives. Evidences are to be collected on actually attained objectives in relation to the intended objectives. Curriculum evaluation is to assess the extent to which the set objectives could be realized through the selected content areas and learning experiences. The various components such as objectives, content, learning experience and the techniques of assessment are to be evaluated. Learner's feedback is collected for assessing the usefulness. Based on the results of evaluation, the gaps are identified and measures are taken to reduce the gap through modification of the curriculum. Curriculum and Syllabus We have understood curriculum as the sum total of all the activities that the institution offers for the realization of educational goals. Now, let us see how curriculum is dependent on syllabus. Syllabus is defined as the various headings of lecture, treatise of course of study, dictionary of education. It is the academic part of the course. Syllabus is some sort of an official guide used by teachers, supervisors and administrators. The syllabus of the course presents the areas of study for a class or an instructional group. It functions as an aid, a route map for the subject, teacher and the target learner groups. We can just consider a definition on curriculum. It is a systematic organization of instructional content and related activities designed to provide students with a sequence of meaningful learning experiences. Davis, 1962. We can see that the main component is nothing but syllabus. What is to be achieved by the learner is stated by the syllabus. Syllabus is specific and is related to specific subject for specific grade levels. Then comes the question of how the syllabus is to be transacted. This process depends on characteristics of learners and learning environment. An interactive combination of all these along with the how of evaluation is titled as curriculum. Syllabus is framed based on the objectives of curriculum. We have already seen that once the content has been decided, the next step in curriculum development is deciding the learning experiences. Thus, curriculum involves the what, how and how far of the course under study. A valid language curriculum will always be flexible and contextualized since learner variables, learning situation and even the objectives of learning a particular language will be changing continuously. Nature of language curriculum The approach and design of curriculum depends primarily on the nature of the discipline. English being a second language, the aims and objectives of learning the language have been clearly defined. With the aim of making the learner use English language for meaningful communication, language skills and study skills are to be developed among secondary school students. A language curriculum which could provide language rich environment for the learners is to be developed. This means that there must be scope for variety tasks and the process must be learner centered. Since learners differ widely with respect to their prerequisites, needs and motivation levels, the curriculum must be flexible in nature. 
there must be freedom for the teacher to adopt the curriculum, especially the classroom techniques and evaluation. The teacher has the freedom to contextualize, to adopt the strategies in tune with the existing teaching learning situation. Remember that such adaptation must be in accordance with the set general goals of teaching the language. Learner-centered curriculum. The learner is placed at the center of the program and the what, how and how far are to be decided by the nature, need, interest and skills of learners. The process of learning is important and not teaching. The psychosocial and cultural variables of the target group are taken into account while formulating the curriculum. Today, educational programs follow a learner-centered curriculum, especially in foreign language teaching. Core Curriculum A program may include compulsory as well as optional courses of study. All the students have to undergo the compulsory courses. Usually, such courses will be designed based on the general goals of the program and all students are expected to achieve such goals. These courses from the core curriculum, based on the need and interest of the students, there is freedom of selection for the optional courses from a given list. Core curriculum, curriculum with the four elements, objectives, content, teaching learning process and evaluation is designed to meet the educational goals. Apart from the content areas and the classroom processes, learners have to be engaged in different types of activities for their overall development and social efficiency. Such activities form the core curriculum. An English teacher can develop a language acquisition environment by organizing co-curricular programs like literary association, class library, reading competitions, etc. Approaches to language syllabus design We have understood that there are different approaches to a language teaching. There are communicative approach and structural approach to English language. The process of teaching and learning of the foreign language will be defined based on the approach that has been accepted. The first structural syllabus was developed in Madras and was made part of English language curriculum at school level. David Wilkins developed the notional syllabus as a reaction against the structural syllabus. Later, communicative approach proposed that syllabus must be flexible in nature and should provide freedom for the teachers to select content areas based on the contextual need. This type of communicative syllabus claimed to foster initiative and creativity among learners in the process of acquisition. Analytic and synthetic approaches Broadly speaking, there are two approaches to language syllabus design. They are the analytic approach and synthetic approach. Analytic approach is based on the communicative purpose of language. Learners are presented with chunks of knowledge which may include structures in varying degrees, but emphasis is always on the communicative or functional label of the content rather than the grammatical labels. To make it clearer, instead of learning about simple past tense, learners will talk about the things they did last week. The language items are not linguistically graded, but items are identified and presented on the basis of their use in the learner's life situation. Thus, analytic syllabus is designed for the purpose of real-time communication. There is no need for selection of grammatical items. A variety of structural items are considered even from the beginning since for daily communication such a variety is necessary. A synthetic language teaching strategy is one in which linguistic elements are presented separately. Language is acquired gradually by parts and the learner gets the whole structure of the language towards the end of the course only. The division of language into discrete items is based on grammatical criteria. In this synthetic approach, vocabulary items which are found to be useful in daily communication will be selected. Then, 
items are presented in a sequence and when these pieces are put together one could develop communication. The complexity of the item, frequency of its occurrence in daily life, situational needs of the word etc. are some of the factors that control word selection. Types of syllabi Based on the goals and objectives of a program, relevant and appropriate philosophy of syllabus design is to be followed. An analytic approach will recommend learning and mastery of language through functions while a synthetic approach recommends teaching of discrete grammatical items. Grammatical syllabus The learning of a language is identified with acquiring mastery of its grammatical system. The language course will have a grammatical organization. Grammatical syllabus has an ordered system of grammatical structures and a list of limited number of lexical items. These items are sequenced and at one time the learner is deliberately exposed to a limited sample of the language. Once he attains mastery over these discrete items, he resynthesizes the parts into original language. Thus, each unit in the grammatical syllabus has a grammatical label and it focuses on some particular aspect of the grammatical structure. As the next step, a list of useful words will be learned. The formal aspects of language are learned as rules and are internalized through practice. The assumption is that during real communication, these internalized rules get transferred into the immediate situation. Notional syllabus. The analytic approach to syllabus design recommends notional syllabus. Here, grammatical items are learned based on their usefulness in real communication. Linguistic forms which are mostly needed to express the need of the target group of learners are included in the syllabus. Selection of items is based on the socio-linguistic context in which the learner will have to make use of the grammatical items for meaningful communication. There is interrelation of the semantic, grammatical and situational factors. The learner learns how to express ideas meaningfully by combining different linguistic components according to the situation in which he communicates. Notional syllabus follows a cyclic approach. In the beginning, an idea is expressed using a simple grammatical item. Later, with the notional syllabus, he acquires a range of expressions to communicate the same idea or notion. The learner gets recycled through almost all the units in the syllabus through such repetitions. Sometimes, the notional syllabus will carry only the grammatical units first and may add the communicative dimensions later. Language Arts Curriculum Apart from transfer of knowledge, a language learner can learn from others' thoughts, deeds and acts. He could set his life goals based on this sharing. It gives relaxation to the reader and may put forward on time suggestions at the time of dilemma. Updating content, development of language skills, especially reading and writing and reinforcement of the study skills are the other objectives of language arts curriculum. At secondary school level, variety forms of texts like playlet, novelette, anecdotes, stories, biographical sketches and poetry can form the curricular content. Through critical thinking models, the cognitive, affective and psychomotor domains of the development could be stimulated. Pieces of literature, especially children's literature, are pregnant with life skills, child psychology and life message as hidden curriculum. The plot, characters, dialogue, theme and points of view of the writer will have indirect influence on the mental processes of the learners. In constructivist pedagogy, which emphasizes the learner's ability to construct language, literature has to play a significant role. Reading literature and studying the same are different with respect to the aims and processes. Reading for enjoyment is recommended for secondary level students. It kindles imagination, 
develops interest in the language and encourages voluntary reading. It also serves as the basis for extending language use, expansion of vocabulary, tolerance of diversities and development of humane character. In a literary pedagogy, the teacher must first develop literary awareness and then develop interest in language. The level of enjoyment of a text by the learners will differ based on his level of comprehension, interest in the theme and the language and other psychological inclinations. Brooke and Drumfit have developed a list of aims of introducing English literature in secondary school curriculum. The aims are based on the promotion of skills like reading and writing, encouragement of socially desirable attitudes and effective skills and provision of knowledge about language and literature. We could differentiate syllabus and curriculum and understand that syllabus forms the significant component in curriculum. The process of developing curriculum depends on five factors, the need of the target group, the goals and objectives of the program, the course content, the teaching learning experience and evaluation. In designing a language syllabus, either the analytic or the synthetic approach is followed. The selection depends on the accepted approach to learning the language. The major types of syllabi include the grammatical syllabus and the notional syllabus. Along with the core curriculum which is learner centered, co-curricular activities and literature enrich English language acquisition. Before we move to the next session, please try to answer the following questions. Analyze the BA curriculum of any one of the universities in India and establish the relation between curriculum and syllabus. Develop three co-curricular activities for developing oral communication skills in English among secondary school students. Here are some books for your references. Curriculum Development Theory and Practice by H. Taba, 1962, Harcourt, New York. National Curriculum for Primary and Secondary Education, NCERT 1985, NCERT New Delhi. Language Arts Curriculum by M. Ediger and D. B. Rao, 2003, Discovery, New Delhi. Literature and Language Teaching by C. J. Brumfit and R. A. Carter, 1986, Oxford University Press, Oxford. Hope you enjoyed the session. See you next time. Till then, bye.